hockey fans, are you ready to Brave the Wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Brave the Wild is available on all of your favorite podcasting apps, as well as part of the Hockey Podcast Network, sponsored by DraftKings and Raycon. Those Raycon earbuds, love it. Uh, thank you once and always for downloading and listening to this show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. Hopefully the, the microphone's going to be okay. It's hit the floor a couple times now, so it looks a little funny, but it still sounds okay, at least from what I've checked. So uh, the last thing I need is to have to buy a new microphone. I've loved using this thing for a while. Um, so, yeah, many years now. Um, the Minnesota Wild come back from break after a very weird all-star break. Nice uniforms, in my opinion. Apparently, I didn't get a whole lot of positive response with my love for the uniforms. I don't know. It looked like my uh, looked like the '80s. Looked like Vice City, you know, Miami, all that. I, I like the look, but apparently, I guess I don't know. My my feelings aren't uh, <laughs> reciprocated about it from other people. So it is what it is. I don't know. Other than that, the Minnesota Wild come back to play Arizona and Dallas and uh, lost both of them. Yeah, uh, pretty pretty annoying. I, I don't know. It's like, you know, even, you know, like Zolgad said the same thing. He's like, yeah, the, the Wild look like they're red hot, and then they drop three in a row. It's like, yeah, basically what it's been is three up, three down, three up, three down, three up, three down. Like my, <laughs> many, many, many years ago, my McDonald's manager used to say that when we were making fries and uh, during the busy time. Three up, three down, three up, three down. And that's what the Wild have been. Uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves made a fairly significant trade yesterday. That's not the first time I'm talking about the Wild uh, on Brave the Wild, and like uh, the Timberwolves make a significant trade. This one wasn't during the show, announced during the show, but it's like, you know, <laughs> as I'm kind of, you know, mentally preparing for the show and all that and learning about it and all that. Um, so what, what, when is it the Wild's turn? When are the Wild going to make a significant trade? I would say the chances of the Wild making a trade of the Greenways, the Hartmans, the Dumbas, somebody, one of the three, at least one of the three, I would say the chances are way above 50%. It's got to happen. Um, what we get back in return is another story. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think the Wild make a huge uh, win now type of move. Um, we do have the number one prospect pool in the NHL, which is wonderful to learn about. At least that's what they say. We've heard similar stories in the past with the Grandlins, the Grandlin Gronlin, the Niederreiters, the Dumbas. Yes, Dumba was in that group. Let's not forget. He's actually the last guy remaining. Uh, Brodine is actually the other one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Charlie Coyle. It can go on all day. Uh, Jason Zucker, guys like that. And, well, I mean, we got past the first round twice and got obliterated both times by the freaking Blackhawks. So, yay. Um, probably the most positive time, the most positive feeling we had about the future was defeating the, Chicago, uh, defeating the Colorado Avalanche the way we did in 7 back in 2014. Since then, it's kind of been a, you know, I don't know. <laughs> since then it's kind of been a disappointment generally speaking at least with that group and then now this new group we'll see we'll see Marco Rossi people some people are already ready to make a trade other you know as he's kind of playing a little better in Iowa and all that stuff point a game type of guy uh this and that maybe make a big move for you know whoever there was the Bo, Bo Horvat possibility but of course that's long gone he's at the New York Islanders um other names I just I'm not even thinking about the Wild trading for a big name because they're not going to. They're just not. When you look at the salary cap situation, you really think the Wild are going to acquire some big, big name like a Patrick Kane or something? I, I just don't see it happening. It, it'd be cool, but I don't know. He's been really disappointing this year, and I'm actually surprised that I'm saying that. Patrick Kane disappointing? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has been disappointing. Jonathan Taves actually has been playing better. Like, last year, Jonathan Taves was like, like, holy crap. He really has been away for a long time, and it showed. So, anyhow, I'm delaying the inevitable, kind of like the angry video game nerd, delaying talking about uh, <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the NES. It's kind of like that. Maybe not quite that bad, but uh, losing to Arizona and Jack McBain scoring on a breakaway goal because we just kind of fell asleep. Yeah. It's wonderful. 3-2 to two loss in a college arena. It looks like a college arena. It sounds like a college arena. It quacks like a duck. It's a duck. Yeah, it looks and quacks like a duck. It's a duck. And it's the coyotes, not the ducks. But the, just, I don't know, there's another word that rhymes with all that, and it starts with an F. That's pretty much what most people were saying. You know, whether they're picking up the game afterward, maybe they're going to watch the replay because they were busy on second shift or 
they were busy with something else, and they're going to watch the replay. But they saw the score before they watched the replay, and it's like, yeah, they dropped that word. 3-2 to two in Arizona. Okay, I, Vimelka. I, I, I think I have it right, Vimelka. That's what I was told, or that's what I heard, but now am I blanking on my memory, Vimelka. So <laughs> anybody out there that wants to slap me in the face saying I'm saying it wrong, I understand. Um, looks like a solid goalie of the future for uh, Arizona. Maybe not of the future, of the present and all that good stuff. Uh, of course, again, Minnesota, wild ties. Guys like, you know, Zach Cassie, and well, the name sounds like wild, but it's not. Jack McBain, though, again, breakaway goal. He's been like a fourth-line winger, basically. Yay. Not even the center that he was, you know, in college and all that. But how many centers in college wind up being centers in the NHL unless they're like an elite superstar? It's like never. Ryan Hartman somehow found a way to get an assist in the one goal of the game. Two goals. The Wild did score two goals. I'm getting it mixed up with the freaking uh, Dallas game, which was even better. It's even better. Um, the Wild did not help uh, Mark andre Fleury's cause. The Wild did not help Philip Gustafson's cause um, against the Dallas Stars. Philip Gustafson, the main character in Secret of Evermore that I'm playing right now. <laughs> Video game flashback, yes. Yes, I, I named them after two wild goalies. And Marc-Andre Fleury didn't fit, so I wound up picking uh, Jesper Volstedt for the other character, the the dog. And it's no offense to yep, Jesper Volstedt. It's, I just have fun with putting Minnesota Wild names in Secret of Evermore every year because I tend to play it in February. Yeah, February I'm thinking about hockey quite a bit. Shikrin, 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 Chikrin. I guess it's Chikrin, but yeah, multiple goal game. Obviously, again, one of those hot prospects that, uh, he's not really a hot prospect, but trade prospect, hot commodities that people would like to have in a trade because he's got an awesome future. Had a crappy start to the season and all that, coming back from injuries and all that cute stuff, but he's been wonderful ever since. Uh, Vimelka, again, was pretty good in the net for the Arizona Coyotes. And the Wild ended up losing 3-2 to two in in a game where it just felt like they, they fell asleep at inopportune times, the, the Minnesota Wild just fell asleep at inopportune times. Neutral zone, uh, whether it be neutral zone, that, that seems to be where most of the turnovers happen, the greenways and such. I don't know. Um, obviously, he's not a fast skater. He's not fleet of foot. But there are times it looks like just no sense of flipping urgency from this team. And uh, I even talked about that on the Wolves, obviously. Surprise. Of, of course I mentioned that about the Wolves. I mean, they lost by like 30 points to the Denver Nuggets last week, and then they beat Utah by 30 the next game. That makes sense. It's like the Wild getting crushed by, you know, they could they could crush 5 nothing or something by the <laughs> Colorado Avalanche and then come back and beat, uh, let's go backwards, then they lose 5 nothing to Dallas and then come back and beat Colorado 5 nothing or something. It'd be kind of funny. Um, but that's kind of what it felt like. There has to be changes, right? Uh, Sam Steele, of course, demoted to wherever. I guess it's the second line now, right? Yeah, second line. The grief line, people keep talking about it. So it's done, it's broken up, but it's broken up in like small time, like small intervals and such. It's, there's, they seem to be together most of the time still. Just small little intervals here and there. But now you have the uh, the reunited uh, top line of last season, of course, and starting out this season before Ryan Hartman started spilling his coffee instead of drinking it. Um, yeah, you, you remember that commercial last year? Most of you, yeah, that's an inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> Caprice off and Zuccarello was passing the hot, uh, the coffee cup back and forth, back and forth, and then <laughs> Ryan Hartman picks it up and just shakes his head, uh, takes a step and shakes his head like, okay guys, you know, stop being cute. <laughs> That's why Hartman had his 33 goals last year, but um, yeah, he's been spilling the coffee, or it's the coffee, you know, they pass it around too much and it's too cold, but it's more Hartman. He's just, he's, I don't know. He's regressed to the means, folks. Whatever $1.5 million he's making, that's Ryan Hartman, I guess. I, I guess. I, I don't even know how that is. It, it can happen where a guy can go from, like, whatever he was scoring, like 10 goals a year to, like, 33, and then back to, like, four right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's it's kind of like uh, Brady Anderson of the, maybe, <laughs> like, like an extreme example would be Brady Anderson of the Baltimore Orioles. Hey, it's his contract year. Now, of course, Hartman didn't, was stuck in a smaller contract, but let's just still use it as an example anyway. Brady Anderson, it's his contract year. He took a couple steroids, 50 home runs, 50. Every year he was hitting about 11 to 13 home runs a year, center fielder for the Baltimore Orioles. It's 50 home runs, gets a hundred plus million dollar contract. What's, what does he do the next year? Uh, 11 home runs. And the year after that, nine. 
And after that, he was batting about 150 and hit about three. You know, but he's still getting paid, you know. It's, it's okay. That's just part of the game. Yeah, I'm just, hey, I'm happy he got his contract. You know, I just love when people say that. I'm happy for you, too, I guess. <laughs> but, see, poor Hartman, unfortunately, is not going to be the recipient of a very rich contract. So, he's not fortunate in that sense. But a strange example is kind of like that, where it's like, boom, 33 goals. It's like, a, again, it's like a mediocre center fielder taking steroids, hitting 50 homers the next year. And then, yeah, that's what it's like. And then back regresses back to the means for the rest of his career. I guess that's what happened with Ryan Hartman. Minus the steroids. I will not accuse Ryan Hartman of taking steroids <laughs> or performing ha- perform- P- whatever they call PEDs, PEDs, whatever they call it. So, um, Marcus Salino, same thing. He's another uh, Brady Anderson, you know, with his 50 homers last year. Okay, he might have hit about 30, but compared to Ryan Hartman, but uh, uh, he's worse than he was before. <laughs> Marcus Salino has been worse than he was before because he wasn't exactly bad he was he was solid he was what he was he played his role he's been weaker um Hartman and Felino right on top of each other have been really weak and then Sam Steele of course has vanished off the face of the earth he won a couple face-offs and um um that's it <laughs> yeah exactly right you're just waiting for the next next word but that's it Frederick Goudreau looked kind of confused and sleepy at times during this week as well boldly mediocre this week I, I don't know. I'm not happy. This was an awful week. Kaprizov showed up to play for the most part. Did not show up to play for the All-Star game, but I guess that's okay. Uh, most people would say, well, what's the point of even having it and blah, blah, blah. I think it's okay to have it, but I don't know. Maybe they have to, you know, stop getting cute again because uh, like, they got way too cute with the whole, like, we're in Florida. Let's, I, I didn't even know. Like, I, I didn't really watch anything, but the, from what I've heard, like all the weird events they had that didn't make a whole lot of sense so and and maybe guys could get hurt doing this and guys could get hurt doing that i don't know um it could be handled better at the end of the day it's too bad it's too bad because i'm not against having like a little fun you know like say you take the you take that that break in february or whatever time of the year it is usually february early february late january nba all-star game nhl all-star game I don't think they should completely get rid of it and just say, okay, this guy's an all-star, now keep playing. Uh, you know, keep playing a regular season, which I could understand that point of view completely, but I think to completely kill it, that's kind of, I don't know, it's a little on the mean side. <laughs> you know, like, it's nice for a certain city to have fun with an all-star weekend. Just, I guess, figure out a way to handle it better, I guess. That's the best thing I can say. I mean, I, I thought it was handled pretty decently here in Minnesota way back in whatever year that was. That's a while back now. It doesn't matter. Uh, the Wild lost to the frickin' uh, Arizona Coyotes and got beat by Jack McBain on a breakaway. Where Literally everybody fell asleep on that one. Like, what the heck? Um, and I'm sure Jack McBain loved the fact that Matt Boldy was the last guy and I tried to make a diving, you know, poke check, basically, try to poke the puck away and was unsuccessful, to say the least. I bet he loved that the most because it's like, yeah, that's one of those guys that, you know, was in my way. So I had to get the hell out of Minnesota. You know, look, look at me. I got seven goals with the, with the Arizona Coyotes. Seven goals, man. With Arizona, by the way, which if I was so great, I'd be on the top line with Clayton Keller or something. <laughs> but eh, not quite. Uh, not quite. Um, you're still kind of bottom six at best. So I don't know. Uh, hit the road, Jack, and don't come back no more, no more, no more. Um, but I guess he got to say that to us for one day. <sighs> that was Monday. Uh, let's continue. Wednesday, the Dallas Stars hosted the Minnesota Wild. 30, 13, and 10 are the Dallas Stars. First place in the Central, the Wild are in fourth place. And this whole situation about, you know, you're like a point ahead of Colorado or something for like being out of the playoffs. You know, all, all these other teams, like the uh, St. Louis, not not so much St. Louis, but Colorado of all teams. I think the chances of the Wild making the postseason are dropping very quickly because of this up-and-down play. You know Colorado's going to get their heads out of somewhere at some point. I'd be surprised, unless certain players are out for the season. Uh, Landis Cog still hasn't come back. He's been out the entire year so far. But just generally speaking, mm. <laughs> 
games like this, you know, aren't going to help your cause. Games like Arizona are absolutely not going to help your cause. In fact, they flat out, like, bleep it up. Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't see a whole lot of sense of urgency. The first period was, was you know, the, each team had nine shots in goal. That was cute and everything, but nothing happened, so it's, it's frustrating. Good goaltending, though, by Gustafson and, of course, Jake Ottinger, who's as good a goalie as Dallas has had since, you know, the Ed Belfour days and such. And Belfour wasn't in his prime anymore when he was in Dallas. His, his prime was like the early 90s with the Blackhawks, I'd have to say. Um, that was a great team, and he was a great player. Yeah, Calgary, that's the other team I'm thinking about. Calgary, Colorado actually has moved into third, but 58 points apiece. Stars are way ahead, 70 points. So, I don't know, no division championship for us. But, of course, when are we going to talk about winning a division? When Marco Rossi becomes exactly what we thought he was. Uh, when uh, <laughs> Jesper Wallstedt is an elite goalie. Of course, we're, we're okay on the net right now. It's not like, oh, God, please, Jesper Wallstedt, come up here and play, please. But a team like Calgary with a stacked roster is tied with you. Nashville's just four points behind. We always stink against them. Edmonton's been playing really, 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 really well. They're four points ahead of the Minnesota Wild. Seattle's still, you know, doing really well. They're, they're uh, five points ahead of the Wild. They're only in second place, though, in the Pacific could you imagine? Yeah, it's funny seeing uh, Vegas and Seattle winning that division. The Pacific Division, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if it's the Edmonton Oilers win the division. Wouldn't be surprised. They've been playing a lot better. They've been getting better goaltending. The defense is better. Connor McDavid's been out of this world. Um, you know, as amazing as a career as he's had already, he's having a career type of year. Edmonton is a plus 28, which is third in the entire Western Conference. So watch out for the Edmonton Oilers. They're probably going to win the division because Vegas, it's like, here, here we go again. Injury after injury. Mark Stone, who knows what's going on. It's like he's going to be the next Andrew Ladd, the way it's looking. Like three, four years from now, the people are, you know, trading for his contract or something. It's like that kind of thing. So, <laughs> and that's with me, uh, with... Uh, no uh, immediate knowledge of just how long uh, Mark Stone's contract is at the moment, um, but you get the idea. Calgary, of course, is un, un, uh, underperformed this season, so I don't know why I'm getting into all this other stuff, but it, it, again, it's just showing the fact that the Wild's chances of making the postseason are getting tougher and tougher when you keep screwing around playing 500 hockey and all that. So, And guys, there's, there's just no urgency out there. <clears throat> and you have guys playing in the top six that really aren't good enough to play in the top six, like Sam Steele and whatever his name is. Oh, what's his name? Ryan Hartman. They have no business being up there. Jewel Erickson Eck, he scored a goal in the game, but he also kind of got caught sleeping once or twice in the neutral zone. It happens. I mean, Jewel Erickson Eck is probably the most consistent player on the entire team outside of Kirill the Thrill. Those are probably your two most consistent players on the club, Kirill Kaprizov and uh, uh, Ryan Hartman, my ass. <laughs> Drew Lerickson act. Those are your most consistent players up and down the roster. The other guy would have to be Jared Spurgeon. That's why he's the captain, I would have to say. Uh, Jonas, Jonas Brodin is getting reevaluated. So it's a lower body injury, be it an ankle, a knee, whatever the heck it is. Um, some of you may have more knowledge than I do about it. But um, Jonas Brodin, of course, scratched. You get to see Alex Goligoski go against his former club, and he's probably going to play a significant time uh, for a while here. Mason Shaw still stuck as forward number 13, but I don't know. And, yeah, and you know, they don't want to get into rotation. Guys would get annoyed at that and all that cute stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, that's not hockey. That's BS, right? That's how they might, might say something like along those lines. But I don't know. I, I think a Steele, a Hartman, whoever, you know, could easily be scratched for Mason Shaw. Like, give give Mason Shaw a chance to play again. Yes, he'd been invisible. Yes, he'd been kind of meh. You know, even if Connor DeWer, maybe you're seeing not seeing enough out of Connor DeWer. Brandon DeHaim, one of those guys. There's plenty of players that could, you know, get scratched once in a while in favor of Mason Shaw, and maybe Shaw ends up earning his spot back. So, I don't know. A, a trade... A trade for like an uh, for more picks or something like lower mid to lower picks with Ryan Harmon something like that, and I know you don't want to just open up roster spots for certain players, and then have absolutely nothing behind him later on. But then again, there is something. There's Sammy Walker for Pete's sake. So <laughs> I'm I, I'm glad Sammy Walker's playing rather than being scratched every night. Um, but I'm sure being scratched is the most boring, frustrating thing of all time. 
where you just get to practice and then don't even dress for games. It's going to drive you nuts. Um, so I hope the Wild do make a trade. You know, like the Greenways, the Hartmans. And yes, that way maybe hopefully Sammy Walker can have a permanent position up here or at least a potential long-term position. We thought Mason Shaw had a permanent spot. Well, he's still in the NHL. He's still getting paid, but he's the 13th forward. <sighs> this game, I don't know, man. I don't know. They just The Wild just look like a fourth-place team playing against a first-place team. I mean, what more can you say? That's pretty much what this felt like for the most part. It was even in the first period, yes, and the nine shots each and all that. The Wild played pretty well, or, well, not that great, but we got some chances but didn't capitalize on them. Surprise, surprise, because Otter's good. Philip Gustafson, I thought, actually had a phenomenal game, despite giving up three goals, because the last one was empty net. Uh, phenomenal game, and he was left out. He was hung out to dry in certain plays, and he still made, you know, he made that save. That we always talked about, that Devin Dubnik couldn't. He made the save. Like, yes, your teammates let you down. Your teammates screwed you right in the you-know-what. And then you make, you know, you can make a great save. Or just surprise, you gave it up. You know, in, in Dubnik fashion, where he would tilt his head back and make make a scene. And I don't think that rubbed people the right way for years with Dubnik. Believe me, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. It got old, I'm sure. And uh, But um, Phil Gustafson w would end up making some pretty damn great saves in this game. So Gustafson deserves a lot more credit than, you know, like, oh, man, he gave up three goals, you know. But three goals isn't that much. <laughs> and it's going to happen against the first-place squad with tons of talent, obviously. Young and old. Jamie Benn getting a goal, obviously. Uh, the Falska goal was kind of, again, a terrible turnover. Uh, Hakanpah, you got to like that name. Yanni Hakanpah. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I'm pretty sure I got that one this time, too. Hakanpah. It sounds like a restaurant. You know, like say you're doing DoorDash. Boop, an order from Hakanpah. You got to drive to Plymouth, okay? That's three items. So go pick it up. Hakanpah. <laughs> Hakanpahs. That'd be hilarious. Um, sorry. But that's kind of how I feel about that. That's how I feel about these games, though. It's, it's kind of sad, you know? The turnovers, slack a daisical, just mediocre. Hang in your goalie out to dry in both games. The two different goalies, I thought they were they were outstanding. You know what? If you're going to give away a Mike Madonna Award for this week, it's Marc-Andre Fleury and Philip Gustafson. Probably Gustafson even more so, considering what he was going up against. Um, he was... I, I, I thought he was wonderful. And the crap that he faced in this game... <laughs> How many shots did they get on on that? The uh, the stars wasn't it like 30, 36? Okay, so we yeah, so we had thirty nine. It was us, but again, Odinger's outstanding, and I don't know. We didn't exactly have like breakaways and all that like the Dallas Stars did. And Gustafson still still stopped thirty three of them. So save percentage almost ninety two. So I mean, Philip Gustafson is ultimately deserving of it, but I, I, I thought Mark andre Fleury was pretty good against Arizona as well. Just Gustafson is even better, so let's overall give it to Philip Gustafson. Uh, without him, the Wild would have been crushed. Like, say, if we had Alex Stalock. God, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to rip on him, but he, he's not as good as Philip Gustafson. Sorry. Devin Dubnik, his last three years or so here. He would have gotten he would have gotten destroyed, and he would have threw, threw his teammates under the bus, too. I can understand why you would when they play like that. But at the same time, if you're going to constantly throw your teammates under the bus, that's not going to help either. It's just going to continue to be a big problem. So, again, I mean, some mistakes, obviously. And Gustafson with a great stop on the penalty shot. And again, another play where it looked like an absolute goal. Gustafson may be the save of the year with his stick, stick save. And, of course, uh, <clears throat> was it, uh, I think that was Falska, right? Tried to go, uh, not Derek Falska, not, not Derek Falska, Fa Faxa. Sorry, I tried to go five-hole. He should have raised it, honestly, with the way the situation was developing. Flaska should have tried to raise it, but who am I? Who am I? <laughs> I can barely even raise the puck, honestly. It's, it's a skill. It's not that easy. Um, so some of you might be like, oh, skill my ass. I can do it in ten, and in, in, I can do it in a second, but good for you. Uh, with that said, meh, a very mediocre week, obviously. Greenway just looked like crap on multiple plays. Turnovers where he just... Just looked like a fool, honestly. And then slow as hell. Um, Dumba, another turnover. That, that cost a goal. It's at least one or two a week, it seems like. <laughs> Get these guys out of here. I think they're killing us. And and it's not just them. Steele, not providing anything. Felino's been mediocre at best. 
I'm not in a rush to trade away Marcus Foligno, but Foligno, you got to be better, for God's sakes. you got to be better. He, he's just not been good. So, I don't know. Unfortunately, the uh, Ryan Reeves, dare we call it, sugar high or energy burst or whatever it is, it seems to be wearing off a bit. And it ain't Ryan Reeves' fault. It's just the team in general. It's the team in general with certain players not playing well and turning the puck over and getting in the gosh darn penalty box way too much. So, in the penalty kill not being all that great. It's just okay. Uh, power play has been adequate. Jewel Connect did score on that. And again, the wild power play in the kind of mid to upper half, so to speak. And that's about it. With that said, again, the James Shepard Memorial. Last week it was Steel. It's off and on been Greenway and Dumba, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, I don't want people to think I'm picking on the two certain guys and, and all that stuff all the time. But they're not, they've not been good. They've been killing us. Hartman doesn't help us either, uh, Steele. So it's kind of like honorable mention. It's like Goudreau has been disappointing, I thought. I, I don't think he had a good week. Maybe just for the sake of not picking on only Greenway and Dumba all the time, maybe it's Goudreau's turn. He, he's not been good. He looked pretty lackadaisical out there at times. So, so Dean Everson's going to chop my head off here with something, with a stick. That sounds real fun. <laughs> uh, but Goodrow, Goodrow will get it. But other guys, strong honorable mentions that you, all of them: Felino, Greenway, uh, you know, Dumba, Brandon DeHame. Where, where's you know he's he's out there, but I don't know. He's he's out there, he's out there. <laughs> That's about it, <laughs> to say the least. Merrill, Merrill looked like crud. I thought he was probably the weakest defenseman this week, honestly. Um, certainly not all his fault, obviously. I, I think the forwards have been worse than the defensemen, generally speaking, with uh, the uh, uh, neutral zone crap, like I called it a couple of weeks back. Yeah, that's what it's been, neutral zone crap, the, the, the turnovers. That's why I called it that. So, anyhow, with that, we'll take a quick break, come back, and, well, time to talk about DraftKings and, of course, looking at the games coming up. back here on Brave Le Wyel. We have uh, four games to preview. We'll talk about them very shortly. Or so I'd like to believe. <sighs> yep, we got the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Vegas Golden Knights. New Jersey Devils. Those are home games. Florida. Yeah, these are all home games. Seven home games in a row, I believe. Yes, Vegas. New Jersey. Florida. Florida. We better win that one. Colorado Avalanche. That might be the only one we win. Maybe. No, I think the Wild at least gain a split here. Then you host the Dallas Stars in it for the next week. Next week's show will be Dallas, Nashville, Dallas, Nashville, Los Angeles, and yeah, and then Columbus will be the week after, and so on, so forth. No more All Star breaks. No more buys. Just get out and play. It's go time, as we like to say, and as they say on every fireside chat, it's go time. Yes, it is go time. Very much so. Uh, before we talk about the Golden Knights or the Knights or whatever you want to call them, we're going to talk about DraftKings, baby. <laughs> Are you ready for the biggest Sunday in sports? DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 57. Despite the fact I hate both of the teams. Anyhow, <laughs> an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 57 has all the Super Bowl action you need. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get in on the Super Bowl 57 excitement with DraftKings Happy Hour Super Boosts. All right. Check the DraftKings Sportsbook app every day between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Update for Pacific Time. To see what prop bet will be boosted. So, yes, my Super Bowl 50, uh, 57 pick is the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on, of course... Uh, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, Jalen Hurts is, you know, as he goes, the Eagles go, that type of thing. He's been consistent all season. I can't stand the Eagles or the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs rub me even more wrong than the uh, Eagles do. Eagles, of course, you have the old history with the uh, the Vikings and all that stuff, all that crap. Um, Eagles have obviously given the Vikings hell every time we made the playoffs. I don't think we've ever beaten the Eagles, frankly. Uh, the Chiefs, a lot of people are on the Chiefs' jock. I don't know why. I'm not going to join that. 
I, I don't understand. Just because it's Patrick Mahomes, that doesn't guarantee anything, by the way. You know, he lost the Super Bowl already, and he's lost multiple NFC, uh, AFC title games. So let's not let's not <laughs> hand this, the uh, Chiefs the Lombardi Trophy on a silver platter here. This Philadelphia team has crushed everybody in their path all season. The, the, the only time they really started losing is when, they, when uh, Jalen Hurts was hurt. They lost only three games all season. They won 14, and they have, again, plowed through everybody in their path uh, other than that pretty much most of the year. Uh, a couple of close games with division rivals here and there, but that's going to happen. I mean, Brady used to lose to a terrible Miami team and then go and win the Super Bowl. They'd lose like two games a year, basically. It's like 14-2 and two type of teams back when it was 16. So I'm with the Eagles in this one. Uh, Sanders, obviously, is probably going to get a ton of yards, but I think Jalen Hurts is the player to watch for the Philadelphia Eagles, and they will win the Super Bowl. Call to action is download... <laughs> okay, why am I saying that? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, and use code THPN. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And of course, uh, if you want me to pick numbers for Jalen Hurts, three touchdowns, and he'll get at least one rushing touchdown. He will be a part of four touchdowns for the Philadelphia Eagles. At least one rushing. In fact, I might go with two passing and two rushing for Jalen Hurst, but he will be the MVP of Super Bowl 57, in my humble opinion, for your DraftKings Sportsbook app. Do enjoy. Now we'll attempt to enjoy the Minnesota Wild. Yep. And you can also, again, you can also bet on the, on the Minnesota Wild or Vegas Golden Knights or New Jersey Devils on the DraftKings Sportsbook app as well. We'll hear from Raycon next segment. Vegas Golden Knights. Vegas Golden Knights. ESPN Plus and all that cool stuff coming up here. Who's healthy? I don't know. Uh, Mark Stone underwent surgery and will be out uh, of the lineup indefinitely. They're not saying he's out for the season, but but you know what I mean. Yeah, It's kind of like Carl Anthony Towns right now. Uh, unfortunately, with the Timberwolves, probably worse, actually. It's unfortunate. Um, it's significant. And as Mark Stone goes, the Vegas Golden Knights go. Zach Whitecloud, Vegas Golden Knights, was uh, placed on injured reserve as of December 11th. Mark Stone, yeah, he's been out since uh, mid-January, but now he underwent surgery and is out indefinitely and all that. And we heard a pretty long rant on the Sin Bin podcast. Um, they, you know, the the main host Ken wants to wants this team to rebuild. He wants this team to rebuild and stop just trying to hit a home run, you know, with a, a trade or whatever, and give away the future completely. You you, you, you know, because Vegas basically has no prospects; they have nothing behind them, and. Boy, they, they will be a terrible team soon if that continues, so they better watch it. They're very blessed to have Logan Thompson <laughs> as a goaltender. He's a young guy, not super young. Leonard will probably, I don't know if he's ever going to play again. There, there's your Andrew Ladd in the net there for the uh, uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Jonas Brodeen, again, going to be reevaluated, so we'll see what happens there. The Atlantic? <laughs> Michael Russo of The Atlantic. The Atlantic, huh? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yahoo Sports, The Atlantic. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Anyhow, I had to get a chuckle out of that one. Michael Russo of The Atlantic. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> this is the first time, right? Yeah, it's a three-game series because it's, uh, you know, same conference but different division. Vegas, no, Minnesota will have two home games. Vegas will have one. Minnesota hosts this one coming up, I believe. This is tonight, right? No, no, it can't be. It is tonight. It is tonight. Okay, so back to back. Ah, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It is tonight. That's what I thought. Um, April Saturday, April the 1st is the next game. Monday, April the 3rd is the next game. So we'll go from Las Vegas to Minnesota, or St. Paul anyway, in a two-day stint there. Minnesota, no, Vegas has lost four out of their last five, four in a row, and then they ended the losing streak beating Nashville five to one. Impressive. Uh, they lost to Arizona. Hmm. Ah. 4-1 to loss in Arizona. I guess that sounds familiar right now. Loss to New Jersey. In New Jersey, 3-2. to two. These are all road games at the Rangers. 4-1 to one loss at the Islanders. 2-1 to one loss with Bo Horvat and all that cute stuff. And then one in Nashville. 5-1. to one. Impressive. And that's a team you got to beat to make sure you're in the postseason. Minnesota is two out of our last five with our cute little two-game win streak. And then yeah, right before the break, and then now a two-game lose streak, losing streak. So it's two up, two down. Bottom line, we're playing 500 hockey for an extended period. And we're not making the playoffs playing 500 hockey. 
There are plenty of teams with winning records that are not in the playoffs right now. Dare I say more? Okay. Vegas is 16th in goals. The Wild are 22nd. Bloop. Bloop. Yeah, the goal, the goal scoring has completely disappeared. Goals against 10th for Minnesota, 12th for Vegas. <sighs> What's the other stuff? Power play. The Wild are 10th. 10th in the power play. That's pretty good. Uh, Vegas is 12th, and I bet that's going to drop, drop, drop as the injuries continue to mount. Uh, v- uh, what am I looking at? Penalty kill. Vegas is 16th. The Wild are 14th. Interesting how we're kind of both close here in those categories. Penalty minutes. The Vegas Golden Knights have the least penalty minutes in the National Hockey League. Well done. They have about half the penalty minutes the Minnesota Wild have. 335 to Minnesota's 617. Hello? Hello? Like, knock, knock. Hello? <laughs> what does that tell you? What does that tell you? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know who's playing anymore for them with, with the, all the injuries and such, and it's a shame. Stone coming back was such a big deal. Eichel has been playing, and he's less than a point a game guy. Was he worth giving up the farm for? No. <laughs> Am I happy the Minnesota Wild did not do that? Yes. <laughs> I was terrified. And a lot of people are like, you got to make that move. What are you, crazy? You have to do it. Do you, though? Do you? Do you? Uh, oh, I hate what I'm seeing on the TV right now. Sorry. Um, it's, uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. When has it really worked out? When has it really worked out? Especially when the, with a the guy that's been oft injured, character issues, all that cute stuff. You know, why don't you trade for uh, Russell Westbrook, too, while you're at it? We, we got this, baby. Trade for Russell Westbrook in the NBA. You're going all the way. I take this commercial off. <laughs> Anyhow, Chandler Stevenson is the leading scorer overall with 12 goals and 34 assists. Mark Stone was second. Was You notice I'm saying that. He still is, but not going to last. William Carlson, Mr. 37 goals, Mr. 11 this year, but still adequate, like the third leading scorer. Nobody's really standing out. Phil Kessel is obviously much older now. Has a scoring ability, but he kind of is what he is. You know, 52 games, 23 points. He's playing, he's healthy, but he's not that great anymore. He's just okay. He's he's just okay. Uh, Peter Angelo, obviously a phenomenal defenseman. Six goals, 26 assists. He's probably the best player on the Vegas Golden Knights right now. Uh, normally I would say Mark Stone, and you should be saying Jack Eichel. But Jack Eichel, uh, he's okay. He's He's good. He's good. Good, but not great. Remember? Remember that? You know? Remember, remember all that? Good but not great? When we used to say that about Chuck Fletcher? Uh, I think I think it's a little bit more harsh than good but not great <laughs> when you look deeper into that story. Um, no offense to Chuck Fletcher, but it's, it is what it is. Logan Thompson has kind of come back to the means a bit. You know, kind of come back to the norm, so to speak. Great start to the season, but now 2.65 goals against average. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> 19 goals, 13 uh, 19 wins, 13 losses. Those are not goals. Uh, save percentage of nine, uh, .913. Two shutouts on the year. Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill, the former Arizona Coyote at the bare minimum. Uh, uh, he's been very solid for the Vegas Golden Knights. He's a nice backup. 11 wins and 5 losses. He's been very good. Uh, give him credit. Save percentage of .908. That's not awesome, but it's okay. Uh, if that's your backup, that's okay. That's pretty good. Uh, Philip Gustafson's like the best backup there is, but I think he's a platoon now. He's no backup. He's a platoon starter in the NHL. Platoon, though. Like, kind of half and half-ish. That's what a platoon is, if you didn't know. Most of you probably do. A lot of the old misfits that are still hanging around, Marcia Schull and all them, William Carlson, they're, they're, they're okay, but I don't know. They're, 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 they're good enough to win a few games, but they've been struggling and the injuries and all that, and you know, the same old thing where they talk about uh, something's not right, something seems off, and when you keep hearing that, you just know. You just know, like, the players aren't really on the same page. It's it's a mess, and that's kind of what's happening. So, I like the Vegas Golden Knights. I have I do. I've liked them since the day they came in the NHL. I liked them since they announced the name of the team. I still remember watching that live. I was very happy uh, with, with the name and the logo. It's not the greatest logo of all time, but it's pretty good. The color scheme is really nice, you know, I, just, I love the fact that Vegas is in the National Hockey League and that they're that they're good and competitive and all that but obviously the way they're the way they've been run for with the only win now approach is, is it's going to catch up to them um, 
that V looks like the Vikings in a sense too, <laughs> because that's what the Vikings have done uh, a, a lot of times where they just keep going for the home run win now approach. And I don't know, it's kind of killed us forever. It kind of has. Like you, you have a couple of decent seasons, but ultimately don't uh, go all the way. Um, it's too bad. Uh, the Wild will win against the Vegas Golden Knights. Long story longer. I just had a lot to say about that because, you know, I like the Golden Knights. I wish to, I wish they were doing better. I better get moving. The Wild will defeat the Golden Knights. The leading, uh, the, the most likely guy to score in the game is going to be. Is it going to be a miracle? Is it going to be Sam Steele? Is he going to score? We'll go with Sam Steele. I'm going to pull a rabbit out of my hat. Sam Steele is going to prove me wrong because I ripped him up and down on this show. Sam Steele scores. The Wild defeat the Golden Knights with a final score of 3-2. to 3-2. Two. Three to two. Not a high-scoring game. We could even go to 2-1 to one type of game. But the Wild defeat the Golden Knights. Marc-Andre Fleury gets a win versus the Golden Knights. Because I do think it's Fleury because Gustafson played last night. <laughs> so, New Jersey Devils. Oh, boy. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah, the New Jersey Devils, 33, 13, and four. They're like the Dallas Stars, but much younger. Jack Hughes has just had a multi-goal game. All these excellent players. Yep, and they're saying how Jack Hughes missed time, but then he came back. So I'm not going to talk about Jack Hughes missing the game because he's not going to. He had two goals last night, so I don't think he's going to miss this one coming up on a Saturday. Yeah, Saturday at seven in the X should be a lot of fun. Jack Hughes has 35 goals. 35 goals. Dougie Hamilton, the former Calgary Flame, and I remember him very well. Uh, New Jersey's eighth in goals, third in goals against. What, did did old what's-his-name come back out of retirement, or what? No. (laughs) Old what's-his-name, right? What a great goalie he was for the uh, New Jersey Devils for so long. And, of course, that would be Martin Brodeur. I was almost blanking, like, because, I mean, (laughs) obviously I've been watching hockey forever, so... So many names popping up in my head. So my apologies, Martin Brodeur, of course. Again, those fun commercials for a while there. I uh, think he would came out of retirement. New Jersey's only 18th in the power play. Weird. 11th in the penalty kill, 10th in penalty minutes, and so on and so forth. Two game series, generally speaking, because of the uh, you know it's Eastern Conference. Uh, the next game will be in New Jersey on March the 21st, Tuesday. March the 21st, the Jersey Devils are 4-1 and in their last five. They've been excellent all season. They look like an absolute. They look real. This is not just a cute little start to the year. They're 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 good. They're, they have the same record as Dallas, basically seventy points. Uh, two to one win versus the Penguins. Three to two win versus the Vegas Golden Knights. Those are home games at Nashville. Six to four loss at Dallas. Three to two win. Impressive. Rematch of the two thousand Cup final, by the way. Finals. I like to say that better. And the sappy and crappy, messy Vancouver Canucks five to four victory. Interesting took five goals to beat them, but they did. And, yeah, Jack Hughes, multiple goals. Uh, that's a guy that, you know, kind of slow start. A, a lot of these guys, you know, Marco Rossi, slow start. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. Vanacek, Vanacek, v- Vitek Vanacek, double V over there in Vegas. No, not Vegas, New Jersey. <laughs> With a couple of shout-outs, save percentage of 916, save percentage of goals against average, pardon me, 2.34, so... Interesting, two, three, four. Jack Hughes with 67 total points. Superstar now. He's a superstar now. 35 goals, 32 assists. Jes- J- uh, Jesper, Jesper, Jesper Bratt with 50 points on the season, 20 goals, 31 assists. Dougie Hamilton, the former Calgary Flame, almost 50 points. He is surging. Uh, Nico Hissier, also a number one overall pick for the New Jersey Devils years ago. Not not as uh, not as dominant as Jack Hughes, but Jack Hughes was looked on as you know this upcoming phenom, and he's starting to show it now for real. Um, he, he started showing signs last year, but this is the real breakout here. He looks like a stud now. Eric Halla, who's been all over the place and everywhere he goes, he does pretty well. Twenty one points, only four goals, seventeen assists in fifty games. Played all games. Good knock on wood there. But yeah, Jack Hughes, yep, looking like the real deal where this New Jersey team really could be something. Alexander Holtz, one of the counterparts in that Marco Rossi draft. He's been in 18 games in the National Hockey League this year anyway. Uh, four points, three goals, one assists. One assist, pardon me. The Wild will not we beat the New Jersey Devils. I think it's going to be like a it's going to be a frustrating 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 3 to 1 type of loss. Quill Kaprizov will get possibly the lone goal in the game. I think it's going to be 3 to 2. Maybe it goes to a shootout if we're lucky. We get a point out of it, but 
I do believe the New Jersey Devils will defeat the Minnesota Wild, but Kaprizov will be the goal scorer in that game. Uh, move along quickly to the Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers, a team that kind of made a mess of us last time around. So this team we've actually played now. <laughs> the other teams we hadn't. Patrick Hornquist, injured reserve as of December. Anthony Duclair, I do declare, sorry, yeah, out forever. So, yeah. Uh, unless that's inaccurate and he's playing by now. Uh, five to three Mets of a loss back on Saturday, January the 21st. This is the season finale, the rubber game, so to speak. Hopefully the Wild can get a split here. Florida still got a great offense. So they do have Matthew the Chuck for Pete's sake, right? So four goals there, or fourth in goals, 26 in goals against, despite all that investment in goaltending, which we'll make fun of forever because it's stupid. Tenth in the power play, tied with Minnesota. 50, or excuse me, 25th in penalty kill. 30, uh, the worst team in the league with penalty minutes. Take advantage, guys. You got the 10th best power play in the NHL. Take advantage, but of course, Florida's saying the same thing. 32nd penalty minutes for them. 32nd. The worst in the league. The Wild are 30th. Um, so, take advantage if you possibly can. Florida is, what are they? 5th place in the Atlantic. 25, 22, and 6. The Wild are 27, 19, and 4. So, a significantly better record for Minnesota. The St. Paul Wild, right? Yuck. Yeah, look at these messy games. Look at this. Just look. Yeah, okay, shut up, Joey, and just say it. <laughs> at New York, 6-2. to two. At Pittsburgh, 7-6. to six. You give up 13 goals in two games there. See, see, see I can add, you know. 4-3 uh, to three loss versus L.A. Mm, that was a cup final, wasn't it? 2012, Zach Parisi. Zach Parisi's last uh, series uh, with the New Jersey Devils. They lost to the Kings. The Miracle Kings and the Miracle Devils. Cinderella finalist that year. Kings end up winning it all. Uh, 2012, yep. What a beautiful spring that was, by the way. Boston beats the... Uh, or, yep, they, they, the Florida beats Boston, the best team in the NHL. Wow. 4-5-3, or 4-2-3. Or and then the, the Florida Panthers beat their cross-state rival 7-1 to one after the whooping they put on uh, Florida in the playoffs last year. 7-1. to one. Impressive, but regular season doesn't mean as much as the postseason. It's just an unfortunate reality. Spencer Knight and Serge Bobrovsky. Spencer Knight was so highly touted, but three goals against. Mm, I don't know what they're doing over there. Other than, you know, having a wonderful player in Matthew the Chuck, it's kind of a mess. It's a weird team. Um, some some nice acquisitions that have played way better in Florida than uh, Buffalo and Calgary, Sam Reinhardt and Sam Bennett. Way better in Florida than in Calgary and Buffalo, like I just said. But generally speaking, a team that had an awesome record last year and had a chance with the best offense in the league to do something, and they just simply didn't. They got beat right away. Anton Lindell, again, the Marco Rossi draft. Uh, half a point a game. 44 games, 22 points. It's that simple. But the Chuck, 71 points, 27 goals, 44 assists. Obviously a superstar. And I'd say he's the better of the two. The Chucks, but Brady's pretty good too. Uh, Carter V, we'll just say, with 47 points, 28 goals. He actually leads the club in goals overall. One more goal than the Chuck. Varder Verheg. Verheg. I think I got that right. Barkov, yep. Alexander, Alex, Alexander Barkov with uh, 33 assists. 14 goals in 43 games. More than a point a game guy there. Brandon Montour, obviously, also been pretty good for them. The Wild have to win this game. Quite simply have to win this game. Return the favor. 5-3 to three win for Minnesota. Multiple goal game for Kirill Kaprizov has a multiple goal game. Two goals for Kirill Kaprizov. Zuccarillo will also factor very much. Probably a three-point or plus game. Three, three or four-point game for him. But I think, uh, yeah, I think that top line does something here. And the Minnesota Wild uh, take advantage and beat the Florida Panthers 5-3. to three. Not a pretty game, but a win. None the less. The Lanch, the team you gotta, the team you got to beat to make the playoffs. Well, good luck. Good luck. No, it's not necessarily them. Might be Calgary. Uh, <laughs> good luck, right? We are in the wild card right now. Landis Gog, he returned to skating for the first time. But we'll see what happens. He's been out forever since, like, September-ish. So it is what it is. Darren Helm was out for the game on Feb 7th. That's all they had to say there. Josh Mason, week to week, years ago, or, month, like, months ago, pardon me. So we'll talk about that. He's not one of the main factors there. Colorado did beat the Wild 6-3. to three. Weird. We only played them three times, even though they're in our division. But that's how it goes. It's a weird 
schedule. That's how the NHL is. 6-3 to three win for Colorado on October the 17th. We haven't played since October the 17th. Huh. This one's in the X. That one was in the X. Wednesday, February 15th, and then Wednesday, March 29th in Colorado. The Avalanche are 3-2 and two in their last five. 2-1 two win versus Seattle in Seattle. Nice. 3-2 to two win over Washington. 5-3 to three loss to Anaheim. Okay. 4-2 to two win over St. Louis and a 2-1 to one loss in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, sorry. Uh, Colorado is 24th in goals. Second, second in goals against. I think they're doing okay without Darcy Kemper. Ninth in the power play, 19th in penalty kill, 8th in penalty minutes. Okay. Nasty. Um, this is the rubber match of this week, anyway. Miko Rettinen leading the club in goals and points. 61 points in 49 games, 34 goals, 27 assists. McKinnon, in only, 30, in only 38 games, leads the club in assists of 41. Impressive. Only 14 goals, but being a more of a playmaker this year, Kill McCarr right at a point a game. 30, 13 goals, 32 assists, 45 games, 45 points. Good for him. Um, second in goals against, huh? Well, I, I guess it's a, yeah, it's, it's because it's a consistent duo, I suppose. Because it's like neither one of these guys really blows my socks off. Gorgiev, I mean, it must just it's good defense in front. I mean, Kill McCarr is that good. Offense and defense, I suppose. But uh, three shutouts on the season. And the fact that both goal save percentage is just about 92. So they've given up a lot of shots, but great save percentage. So that's nice. Second in goals against. Huh. It doesn't look like it, does it? But I, I guess so. They've, they've stayed relatively low scoring. And their scoring hasn't been all that great. But at the top, obviously, Ratton and, and uh, McKinnon have been great. But McKinnon's missed a number of games, which is nothing new. <laughs> It's, that's just how it goes. Um, their, their collective save percentage, yeah, again, is about 92, so you can't really complain. Goals against is about 2.5, so again, you can't complain. So, obviously very good. Gorgiev, 2.6 goals against Franquez, 2.53. So, and again, each of them has at least one shout-out. Two for Gorgiev and one for Pavel Franquez. So, nice. Nice. Gorgiev, 20 and 11 on the season. Franquez only 7 and 7. Been a little snake bit, unfortunately. The Wild will beat the Avalanche. The Wild will beat the Avalanche. Should the Wild go 3 and 1 this week? Maybe we'll end up going 2 and 2. I wouldn't be surprised. I think we beat Vegas for sure. But obviously, th th there's a pretty good chance this could be a split where we end up losing to Florida again or we lose to Colorado again. But we're going to win one of them. We're going to win at least one of them. Maybe I'll step out in faith and think the Wild are going to win both. I'm probably crazy to say it, but the fact this team has been so up and down, I, maybe, maybe, maybe it'll end up like that. Uh, so the Wild will beat the Avalanche, believe it or not, four to three, four to three, probably a. Uh, but I think we're going to carve up a point to the Avalanche in typical Wild fashion. Maybe we'll have a three nothing lead. The Colorado will tie it up and then we'll win an OT or shootout. Uh, Boldy will score in this one, and the Wild win four to three. So, with that, let's look at the prospects for the sake of time. I've been going on and on and on. I, can't, I love talking hockey. I'm sorry. I can't help it. So, it's just how it is. I, I love doing this so much. Brock Faber right away. You're not going to go with any soundbite here. Let's just move. Brock Faber for the future national champion Golden Gophers. Now at 20, uh, 28 games, 20 goals, or 20 points anyway. Three goals, 17 assists. Looking good. And again, a future Stud defense and for the Minnesota Wild, at least a top four pairing, that type of thing, but if not a top two pairing. Uh, a lot of people continue to say he's a plug and play for Minnesota going forward. <coughs> Pardon me. Let's get to the elite prospects here. Liam Ugrin and Yurov. Those are our, you know, two top picks this past year. A couple of first rounders. And now I'm getting all kinds of stuff here. I apologize. Ogren. I'll say Ogren. I've been saying Ugrin. I've been kind of back and forth of that. Um, in thirty games, seventeen total points. For the main uh, Swedish Swedish league, ten goals, seven go, uh, seven assists, seventeen points in thirty games there. So again, hanging in there. He's on pace for about yeah about a half a point a game, twenty two points in forty games for yeah that's the Swedish league there. So good for him. The Swedish league. O Ogren, yeah, he continues to factor though, and that's what's good. He'll kind of yeah like they like about a, yeah a half a point a game. So he'll. He'll have some. He'll have some good moments. He'll have a couple quiet moments again. And remember, he's super duper young. 
Danil Yurov now 11 points in 52 games in the KHL. 52 games in the KHL. That's that's good. You know, it's it's good. He's just going to continue to develop. And I agree with people that would say that the KHL is the second best league in the in the world behind the NHL. I strongly agree with that. I think if Kirill Kaprizov was in the AHL instead of the KHL when he had what 65 points in the KHL, he would have probably had closer to 100 in the AHL uh, when he was like you know his last year in the KHL. So. To, to do to, to do just about anything at age 18 in the KHL is pretty good. So it's not pretty numbers, but he's 18, folks. So we'll continue to come back to that. I, I don't know. I'm not necessarily going to go fall on a sword for wild prospects, but I, I have to be honest about it. Again, Iowa continues to play fairly well. Rossi continues to be about a point-a-game guy. In fact, he's right at that now with eight goals and 19 assists. Sammy Walker continues to be the best overall player, I have to say, on the team. Other than Nicholas Paton, who's a, you know, he's a guy who's good enough to be a fourth liner. Uh, but, you know, he's kind of that in-between fourth line NHL, top line AHL type of guy. Phenomenal in the AHL, phenomenal in the juniors. But uh, in NHL, he's like a, sing- a single digit in 70 games kind of guy in the NHL, unfortunately. So it's just how it is. You know, it's a reality. An- an- another reality is Beckman is, you know, still stuck slightly above a half point a game. In his, uh, a, you know, in the AHL, he's second in goals for Iowa, which is nice and everything, but it's seven goals behind Sammy Walker, who hasn't even had to, who hasn't even been there the whole season. Sorry, fourteen goals, nine assists. Uh, Got to get more assists. Got to be more of a factor. Still twenty-one, still has a chance. But Adam Beckman, I don't know. I don't know if he's an NHL player. Rossi, I mean, he's a point-to-game guy, and people are questioning whether he'll be as good as uh, originally av- advertised. Pardon me, a top-six type of guy, and potentially a number one forward. Uh, number one center, pardon me. Jasper Volstead continues to be fantastic, generally speaking. 2.6 goals against one shutout, but that was a couple of weeks back. McIntyre improved his numbers a little bit, getting to 3.08 in his uh, goals against, but still slightly worse than 90% there in, in save percentage. Iowa's been okay, nothing great. Sweeney's been picking it up, though he's certainly been playing significantly better. Now at uh, 12 goals, 8 assists, 20 points in 31 games. Again, coming back from uh, injury here, he missed a, uh, about a month or so. He's been a lot better, though, since coming back, and that's good. And he needs to be. <laughs> he's 24. That's the one thing. He's 24. He's actually older than Walker, so it is what it is. Got time to get up for Nick Swainy if he wants to play in the NHL. Unfortunately, I think his chances are slim, and it's, uh, I hate saying it. Uh, Damian Drew, he's been playing a little better little better, but still, generally speaking, not as good as advertised either. Well, not, maybe not advertised, but there was a time it was it was Giroux and uh, DeWer that were dominating, uh, but Giroux has definitely, definitely been uh, significantly weaker the past year and a half or so. Damon Hunt still stuck at six points, along with, uh, well, no, Ryan O'Rourke's at seven, all assists for him. So uh, Iowa's been okay, but of course they're in the All-Star break, so they only played like one game this past week, so shouldn't get too hard and heavy into the Iowa Wild. Um, other youngsters and the juniors and such. And of course, who, who's Nadinoff, an ongoing thing that I started in the fan interaction segment. I'm thrilled to have this guy. Absolutely thrilled. There was somebody that thought, uh, well, well, we'll get to it. I, luckily, I, I was terrified, thinking, oh no, this can't be what Wild fans really believe. Whew, thankfully, it wasn't. It was just an individual person, so that's good. Um... Nesterenko, Marshall Warren, I know, those guys in Boston College. Well, Nesterenko's, yeah, I don't know, 22 points in 26 games. I don't know. I, I don't know what his chances are of getting too far. Marshall Warren, same thing. I just don't know. Nine points in 26 games. Defenseman, of course, but still. Nesterenko is a center. Luckily for him, he still has some time in Nesterenko's case. Gosh, it's already his junior year, though. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's ahead of last year's pace. That's good. I mean, I, I suppose a point-to-game type of guy, he's slightly below that. And the college rankings isn't that bad, so it really isn't. Uh, Nate Benoit, the <laughs> newer version of the... <laughs> and apparently, he's been traded to the Waterloo Blackhawks, still in the US, USHL. So from Price City Storm to the Omaha Lancers, now to the Waterloo Blackhawks. Benoit did have a couple points, though. Now he's at 17. 17 points, getting his four, uh, to four goals and 13 assists in 37 games. But now he'll be playing with the Waterloo Blackhawks. Interesting. Made Nate Benoit the Bryce Misley of defensemen, unfortunately. Uh, and God bless Bryce Misley, by the way. 
Josh Pilar, same thing. Ah, <laughs> hasn't played. Yep, 12 games, 12 points. Let's just keep going. Kyle Masters, again, the guy who jumped up so much. A point-a-game defenseman from a guy who was about a fourth of a point a game most of his time uh, with the Red Deer Rebels coming to Kamloops. Kamloops, he's a point-a-game defenseman with 38 assists and 8 goals, plus 11. He's been wonderful. Again, Edmonton, Alberta native, 19 years of age, right shot defenseman, point-a-game guy in the juniors, but still a point-a-game guy. That's a big jump, folks, and I think you know that. <laughs> Kadian Kadia, Kaden Bankier has been wonderful. Again, he's another guy that took a massive step forward. He had a huge week, 51 points in 36 games. He's been great, great. 25 goals, 26 assists. The all-time, or his career record, uh, career high now in goals in the WHL, Western Hockey League, 26 goals on the season. Assists, he's got a ways to go to get to 39, but he's going to get there the way he's playing. Way ahead of last year's pace now. Really taking steps forward, so... Love, love, love it. Jack Pert, thought of as one of the best defensemen in the prospect world out there in the NHL, now at 21 points for the St. Cloud State Huskies, one of the best teams in the nation. It could be a, a huge threat in the Frozen Four or NCAA tournament for the Gophers. Hopefully uh, Gophers take care of business and don't underachieve like we did the last couple of years. Not that losing to uh, Mankato meant we underachieved, but how badly we lost. It was ridiculous, ridiculous. Um, but obviously already a career high for Jack Perd with 21 points. He's a sophomore in the uh, in the college uh, in, in college anyway with St. Cloud State Huskies there and looking really good. 21 points in 28 games. Only two goals, but still keep keep an eye. He's going to be good. Darcy Lambos, again, well thought of. Still less than a point a game. He's kind of at last year's pace. Almost exactly. 37 points in 40 games. I mean, at least he didn't take a step back, but not seeing the big step forward. Just a couple of... Uh, he had a hot week. What did he have, like five points in a week just recently? So, because he was way behind. It was kind of like a catch-up <laughs> for him. Uh, we talked about Ugrin and Europe. Let's get to Hunter Haight and all these guys. Hunter Haight, yep. Definitely a slowed down from that red-hot pace to start off his time with Saginaw. But still, over a point a game. Uh, I wish he could keep it going. Uh, obviously, way better than he was with the Barry Colts. But, you know, it's, it's slowed down. 10 goals, 18 assists. 28 points in 24 games. Riger Lorenz. Yep, yep, it is what it is. He's the he's fourth liner in Colorado, or Denver, pardon me. Uh, he's, he's, you know, 8 points in 26 games. And not a whole lot to say there. Ryan Healy. Harvard. He's still stuck at 7 points, but at least he's been playing now. He missed a couple games. Not too many. 2 goals, 5 assists in 7 games. Uh, seven, 7 points in 23 games, pardon me. David Spachik. David Spachik, a guy a lot of us really are big fans of. Unfortunately, again, he's slowed down. He was well. He, he was over a point a game for a while. Now he's got 35 points in 40 games. He's certainly slowed down. He's not on the. Uh, he's not in the prospect of the week conversation every week right now. But he'll pick it up again. Don't worry. I have a very, very. <laughs> he is well, well thought of. A lot of people think that was a, a fantastic pick by uh, Bill Guerin, Judd Brackett, and Co. And another one who, again, looks like a wonderful uh, sleeper in the draft. Ahead of last year's pace, but not way ahead. <laughs> He's a center for the Owen Sound attack of the OHL. Again, coming out of Slovakia versus Czechia. Slovakia, in this case. Uh, 40 points in 42 games. 19 of them goals. So, really appreciate what he's been able to do. With that, that will wrap up the prospect segment. Again, I mean, it's nice to see certain guys taking steps forward. Some of them not so, like Josh Pilar, yeah, he's a dark horse at best, at absolute best. Um, but, I mean, it's nice to know. We, we have we have a, a potential future here, unlike teams like what the Golden Knights have been doing the past uh, several years. You're trading guys, you're trading picks away, and they don't have much of a future whatsoever because they're constantly trying to hit a home run with uh, the Jack Eichels and the Mark Stones of the world. Mark Stone was a wonderful acquisition, but they should have, I don't know, taken it easy after that, I think. Uh, but it is what it is. With that, we'll take a break, and we'll come back and get into fan interaction and hear from Raycon. back here on Brave the Wild, fan interaction segment, and all that awesome stuff. 
But first, we got to hear from Raycon. And I am a legitimate customer. I was a customer before we were doing these ads, so don't worry. I'm not making anything up. I am a legitimate customer of Raycon. So, yep, I originally got, originally like heard about them uh, while watching an angry video game uh, angry video game nerd video and got a 10% discount, which is basically another thing you could do here. So I get to be like the AVGN now. Pretty cool. And I like them, man. They're, they're good. And I'm saying this for real. So absolutely, really happy to have them. This time of year, everybody's talking about making big changes, which is all well and good, but most of the time, pretty unrealistic. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like, yeah, New Year's, Revol New Year's resolution, wanting to lose 50 pounds, 10 pounds, 5 pounds, this and that. Maybe 5 pounds is realistic, 50 might not be. So <laughs> that type of stuff. I've actually found that the smallest changes, like losing 5 pounds, <laughs> to your routine can make the biggest impact. In, in, the same, in, in the same way, you don't have to break the bank to make a big deal purchase. Even the smallest things can be a part of a big change if it's something you use every day, like my Raycons, and they are. <laughs> Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point so you can build great habits without breaking the bank. Yep, really appreciate having them and love using them at work and such. Boy, like canceling out sound is a big deal at work because people like to talk and make a lot of noise. And it's nice to have the sound canceled out of it so you can actually hear your podcast. You can actually hear the music you're listening to. Yeah, you, know, you can actually hear Brave the Wild when you're listening to it because I know, I know that's the main reason you're going to get your Raycons is to listen to Brave the Wild, right? It is, right? I wish. Anyway, whether you're looking for a pair of everyday buds, like I have, low-latency gaming headphones, or a speaker with a battery, they even have that. <laughs> that will last all night at your next party. Raycons got you covered. And yup, Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands. Yup. So you don't even have to choose between products. You can get one of each, or a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of the other guys. Yeah, because it's a big deal. Like, some of these are very expensive out there. Obviously, these very expensive earbuds and all that, earbuds and speakers and all that. The quality is good and everything. And then you think, you know, you want to get something cheaper, like, you know, and then the audio sucks. Well, that's not the case with these at all. The audio is fantastic on these as well. It's, a, it's basically the same as the extremely expensive ones, and it's just cheaper, so it's a good way to go. And I am not making this up. <laughs> I'm not making it up just to do an ad. If you know you'll love your Raycons as much as I do, yep. Raycon wants to make sure you feel great about your purchase. They offer buy now, pay later options. See, that's good too because maybe you're a little behind in bills or something. you got too many bills at once. Every purchase has an easy and free return guarantee. Yeah, absolutely. So really appreciate the everyday ones. That's the ones that I use. I use the everyday ones that I'm, I'm, I'm used to them. And that's pretty much... What what I need is the everyday, uh, everyday earbuds. But uh, if you want to go higher end, go for it. <laughs> go for it if you want to go higher end. There's water and sweat resistant and all that. So pretty cool. Noise isolation, awareness mode, uh, crystal clear quality. That's basically all the all the uh, the strength and positivity of what these bring. Noise isolation is a big thing, especially at work when you know you're on break and you don't want to hear all the freaking people making a lot of noise and you you can't go anywhere else. Or you don't want to hear the crappy music that, uh, which in my opinion, modern music is crappy. So I'd rather shut that off and listen to something a little older. But that's just me. Uh, so yes, <laughs> ready to buy something small with a big impact? Go go to buyraycon.com slash thpn today to get fifteen percent. See, I got ten, but this is fifteen, so that's even better. Yeah, 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash THPN to score 15% off buyraycon.com slash THPN. Uh, really good deal. So hop on board, A. Eh? Let's hop on board the uh, fan interaction segment. Hopefully I didn't mess this up too bad, right? Uh, hashtag BTWMN. But before we even get to uh, the actual normal section, I bet it looks like I had a message here. Was it from Derek? Nope. Derek, we talked a little earlier. Yep, he's starting a podcast. That's, uh, well, yeah, I think it's okay. Should I let the cat out of the bag? Because I believe he's uploading it. Crease and assist. So uh, let's hope he doesn't steamroll over Brave the Wild too hard, but we'll see. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just messing around. But obviously, it's a he's going to be good. If you heard him on this show, you know he's going to be really good. Hockey knowledge is good. And Kale Kalisha Townsell is going to be his co-host. And here she is right now. She's uh she shared something about uh, Boston Bruins and Minnesota Wild, like, trade proposal. You know, you can do that on, like, websites and such, you know. So, um, 
Craig Smith, who's an older guy from Boston. Jake DeBrusque, who looks like a decent kind of half a point guy, a left winger. And Mike Riley coming back to Minnesota. He's actually down in the minors, only one point this season. And a first-round pick from the Boston Brewers, 2023. Go for it. Uh, for Listen to the players. <laughs> Ryan Hartman, Matt Dumba, and a second-round pick from Minnesota. I would do that. <laughs> I would do it, sure. Um, you know, you get a, uh, a decent, like maybe like a middle six left winger. Craig Smith is probably a bottom six older, you know, an older guy who's okay. Uh, Kalisha Townsell says, saw this on Cap Friendly. We get our second, uh, yeah, we get our second 23 first rounder, like like that, with a scoring wing for Boldy. Yeah, yeah, so he would help out. Yeah, DeBrusque would help out Boldy. An expiring, uh, yep, Craig, free, Craig Smith is an expiring, so to free up some cap space. Yep. Uh, and we get Mike Riley back, which would be funny, but oh, what the hell, you know, what the hell. Uh, at the expense of Dumba Hartman and our second, uh, our 2023 second round pick. Personally, I accept DeBrusk plus the 2023 first is an excellent package. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so too. Would would Boston do it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't think Dumba would. Well, maybe he would hurt them. I don't know. But may, maybe they get him to play better. I don't know. Ryan Hartman, same thing. Maybe they go win a Stanley Cup over there. Charlie Coyle almost did, but ultimately didn't. Uh, the top Minnesota Wild players of all time, they put Koivu number one, which is okay. I'm not superly against that. It's mostly just because of longevity, though. <laughs> you know, other guys would have been better, but it is what it is. Should I go through it super quick, super duper quick? I can just kind of scroll here who they have. Or you can, uh, yeah, you can always read it, too. The problem is you have to click and click and click. Brent Burns, number 10. Wait, what's going on? Oh, these are not that. Those are like honorable mentions because they weren't here long enough. Kirill Kaprizov and stuff. Brian Rolston, okay, yeah, he was a he was definitely a thirty plus kind of guy. Thirty plus goal. Mikhail Grand, the number nine. Okay, sure. Andrew Burnett, number eight. Wonderful when he was here. On a couple of stints, but the one the second one was only um, one year. Pierre Marc Bouchard, two years, probably. Pierre Marc Bouchard. Yep, he had a he was here for a while, but I, he missed a ton of time with concussions and stuff after being an Iron Man before that. Nicholas Baxter, number six. He was really good, but broke down later, unfortunately. Uh, Ryan Suter. Ryan Suter, fifth. Okay, yay. I know, he was good. He was good, but behind the scenes, you know what I mean. It's sad, though. These guys should have been number one and number two with how much they were paid and how much we were counting on them. Instead, they're fourth and fifth. Zach Parisi ranked fourth, maybe because he was clutch at times in the playoffs, but not that clutch. Jared Spurgeon is ranked number three. Okay, sure. Wonderful career. He's been here forever, and he's he's been good. Marion Gabrick, number two, despite he was only here for, well, he was here longer than it seemed. But he was hurt so damn much in the later part. Every single one of these guys. Oh, he was hurt a lot. You know, he was hurt a lot. He was hurt a lot, especially in the later stages. And the number one, Miko Koivu. Yeah. I don't think he's the most talented, but, uh, you know, overall longevity and, you know, his brand is on the, you know, he's part of the brand and all that. I get it. So Isaiah Butler, BVM, sports journalist out of Minneapolis. So cool. Cool. Updated on January 27th, 2021. No, 2023. I'm just kidding. Why did I say 21? I don't know. I'm stupid. I was saying, honest to God, I really, really like the All-Star uniforms this year. Probably the best in forever. They had that 1980s pastel Miami Vice look. Very nicely done. Wish they could keep them forever. Unfortunately, I was met with almost no response at all on this, which is kind of disappointing, but that's okay. Uh, Derek Velska says, let Crockett and Tubbs wear them. Not for me. Yep, and that's it. Nobody responded. It was kind of like... It was almost like, wow, I really love these uniforms. What do you think? And the person's like, whatever. It's like, ah! So that, that's the response I got. Derek pretty much did the shrug. Uh, he didn't do the shrug emoji, thankfully. But because uh, that, uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. There are little, some, some, sometimes little things bug people. The shrug emoji makes me want to smash the, the, the screen. I hate when people do that crap. But thankfully, Derek does not do that. Thank you. He, he, though, he, though he does do the star shrug star. Which is okay. It doesn't bug me. It doesn't bug me that much, you know. Uh, he shared a uh, Derek is crease and assist again before we get to the lightning round. Shares a, a poll, which I think are always awesome. What do you think is the single biggest culprit of the Minnesota Wilds five and five scoring woes? If it's not one of these choices, what do you think it is? Please retweet. And yep, and I I did retweet with a uh, with also a BTWMN, so it would be there in the uh, yep, it would be there. Or actually, he put it there, didn't he? Thank you, Derek. That was actually smart. Very smart. And I did retweet it. 
So what won, what won it all, it's, it's four different possibilities. Missing Kevin Fiala got first place, 38.8. Uh, second place was 31.8. That would be uh, number 38, number 17, no threat at all. That would be Hartman and um, Felino. I actually picked that one, so I got second place there. Dean Nevis and Line Combos got third place at 18.6. And Flybys, no net crashing, 10.9%. Uh, percent. So, oh, it's still going. It's still going, but, yep. So that 17 thing, yeah, the Felino and Ryan Herman could be like no threat at all. That's what I voted for. That got second place so far. And I said, yeah, want line, shuff want line sh shuffling and f frustrated with the Minnesota Wild right now? Ask Blade of the Wild and da-da-da-da-da. Ha make sure you hashtag it BGW, oh man, which does make a huge difference. Uh, okay, those are in the loose, so I'll go from there. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. So... Derek Felska starts off his lightning round and says, <laughs> at Crease and Assist, at Crease and Assist, and keep a lookout for that podcast. At, you know, it's called Crease and Assist. It's coming. So keep a lookout. Start searching in that Apple podcast and all that, whatever you use, Google Podcasts and others. Um, keep a lookout for it. And you know I'm going to be listening, and uh, I believe he's going to do a similar thing where it's hashtag, and I forgot what it was. Oh, boy. Oh boy, but I will keep a lookout. Keep a lookout in that feed at Crease and Assist, and then we'll eventually do the hashtag similarly because it keeps everything organized, and you can do it chronologically by latest. You just click latest and go from down to up, so which is smart, I think. Uh, okay, get to Derek right now. The, uh, yep, there it is. The Athletics' Scott Wheeler said the Minnesota Wild prospect pool is the best in the league. Is this worth getting excited about, or is this just hype for a fan base that is so desperate for its team to be relevant? A little of both. It's nice to have. It's nice to have. I'm sure the Vegas Golden Knights would like to know. They have the best prospect pool in the league because theirs is probably the weakest. It's bottom It's bottom 10 at the very least for the Vegas Golden Knights. At the very best, it's bottom 10. So it's nice to have. It's nice to know you have a potential future. But the problem is, yeah, the, the point is you want to be even keel about this kind of thing because look what happened last time. Uh, look at the Twins. We used to say they have the best you know farm system in Major League Baseball. What good did it do them? You know, they won a couple of divisions and got smoked in the first round every year. One year, the first the first time they made the playoffs, you know, and this is, of course, well after the glory years of the two World Series, about a decade later and beyond. Um, the one time, they they barely beat the uh, Oakland Athletics. Great game, though. Uh, game five, Radke on the mound and all that. Um, but then, then got absolutely obliterated by the Anaheim uh, Angels in the ALCS. That's like the last time the Twins advanced in the postseason. After that, it was just getting our butts kicked by the Yankees, the Oakland Athletics, or the Houston Astros after that. A lot of fun, but mostly the Yankees. So, again, yeah, getting overly excited about prospects is not good. It's really not. It is It is hype. It is hype, but th there's a chance. There's a chance we could have something to, to work with. And for a team in our current cap situation, it's really good news. It's at least a chance that hopefully things pan out. I'll say I have more faith in this uh, scouting team, this, this 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 front office, than the previous one. I have more faith. Uh, Chuck Fletcher was the first guy to bring any type of uh, a farm system whatsoever years ago because Doug Risebrow, you thought Chuck Fletcher didn't care about the draft. <laughs> Chuck Fletcher cared about the draft to a point, but Risebrow, it was just like, you know, oh yeah, let's trade away a third-round pick for... A guy that's, you know, that's had like 10 points in the NHL because he's tough. He's tough, you know. So that was kind of dumb. And he kept doing it, too. Next, uh, that was a really, you know, obviously really good question. Very, <laughs> very relevant. Uh, not that they, not that, uh, not all of the, yeah, like everything Derek says is relevant. Um, if I were to tell you, yep, <laughs> Morpheus, now, what if I told you, if I were to tell you a player slash athlete is dominant, at their sport, hockey or otherwise, what would that mean to you? That would mean he is, you know, he's 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 a he's a cut above he's a cut above the rest. He's a cut above, you know, he, he's a cut above basically, like in the NHL. Like a, it could be anywhere from a McDavid to Kirill Kaprizov. Like th that's a dominant player, uh, a, a guy that if he stays healthy could become like legend status. Legend status, that's probably another question to ask someday. Like, what would legend status mean? I can, I can imagine you asking that next week. That'd be a fun one. So maybe I shouldn't get into that now, just in case you do. Um, dominant, though, yes. Uh, definitely a cut above, maybe a top 10 player 
top to top 10 to top 15 player in the league, in my opinion. Like a Justin Jefferson is dominant at his sport. He's dominant at his sport. Um, Patrick Mahomes, God, uh, God forbid, is, is dominant at his sport. I don't want them to win. I don't care about the Chiefs. <laughs> but he's dominant at his sport. You know, it's people like that. Um, Kaprizov is dominant. Gabrick could be at times, but he really wasn't. He just said he was like a cut below. He was like he was like a tier below what I think Kirill Kaprizov is. So I would say Gabrick was not dominant. He had potential to be dominant, but it seemed like he never really reached that. Just a couple, maybe two out of two out of two years out of his career, you could say he was dominant. Where Kaprizov, I think, clearly is. So it's a cut above. Like it, it's above. It's above all star level. Like, Gabrick was all-star level. Kaprizov's above that. That kind of thing. So that's dominant. Awesome question. Next, the lightning round continues. <laughs> the Minnesota Wild are moving Ryan Hartman back to the top line center between Zuccarillo and Kirill Kaprizov. Do you think this move will reignite that line scoring at even strength, or will Hartman's penchant for penalties make it counterproductive? Ooh, yep. <laughs> Counterproductive. So far, it's... Uh, so far, it's like kind of like a wash. Because Steele was doing nothing. Um, maybe I'm just an idiot here. But yeah, Steele, was, Steele wasn't doing really anything at all. And that got old real quick. Um, why am I on this wrong page here? But uh, Hartman, generally speaking, has been slightly better. But overall, not necessarily. Uh, he <laughs> counterproductive. I think it easily could be because obviously, starting out the year, he wasn't he wasn't good at all. Uh, yes, he did get at least one penalty. Yeah, with the Arizona Coy- in the Arizona Coyotes game, it seems like he's almost guaranteed to get a penalty every night, doesn't it? Which is really irritating. So it it can be counterproductive because it doesn't do you any good at all. Yeah, but he did get a penalty versus the Stars. I just wanted to make sure about that. Yeah. For a while, he hadn't been getting penalties, and then all of a sudden, boom, yeah, basically from like Jan nineteenth on, it's pretty, it's been pretty ridiculous actually. Just the Buffalo game, he didn't get a penalty, and we won that game. Funny, so <laughs> we actually beat the the Buffalo Sabers, and that's the game. Uh, that's the game he played in, obviously again. But now he's gotten at least one penalty per game since. So. It, it can it can be counterproductive, yes. So I'm going to lean that way, unfortunately. Sorry for my wishy-washy uh, answer. It can be counterproductive, and he's he's not providing much of anything. It, it, it's it's kind of like a flip a coin, like, okay, well, why not? Why not give it a chance? Maybe maybe things will get going because Steele's not doing anything. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of how it is. Um, Derek Fels continues, lightning round. Lost to, the Wild lost to one of the worst teams in the, in the league in Arizona. That might mean the team is overrated. What is the most overrated video game in your opinion? Ooh. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to backtrack real quick because I saw there were a couple of responses to what Derek said. Uh, Kemper Cougar said, and to be honest, sit steel and bring back Shaw Rossi. Yeah. Yeah. I would like that. Um... What was she responding when she said, no, he needs to sit again? That would be, uh, yeah, that would be Ryan Hartman. I'm guessing that's got to be. Yep, cool. Thank you for that. Um, Bing Brack Shaw or Rossi. I'm kind of leaning that way, too. Okay, so she started with, no, he needs to sit again. And to be honest, sit still and bring back Shaw or Rossi. I'm seeing messages here. Yeah, but those are, yeah, neither one of them are Derek. They're like, yeah, some of that's like something completely unrelated, so we'll move on. Yeah, not the not the comments, but the, what's it called? It's the most overrated video game. There are quite a few. <laughs> there are so many. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild? I don't know. People are going to get mad, right? Uh, but, uh, to be honest, yeah, I don't have a Switch. I'm not really into that 3D style. I, I like Zelda, like with a bird's-eye view approach. Or, or even just the one time they did the uh, the platforming style in Zelda 2. There are so many overrated games. Uh, uh, Final Fantasy pretty much from 8 on, and really even the second half of that game or so, Final Fantasy 7, pardon me, is overrated. Oh, man, overrated, most overrated. It's so tough. 
I wish I had like a black and white answer on that. Um, like a Soul Calibur games, uh, Mortal Kombat, all that. I've never liked fighting games because uh, it just gets annoying and insanely repetitive. Most overrated. Okay, I think I have a winner. And it's kind of a broad thing, but it's in general. Are you ready? Call of freaking duty. Call of duty is overrated. First person shooter. Oh, F, I got, oh, F, I lost. Oh, F, I lost. Okay, let's play, let's go. Oh, F, I lost. Oh, F, I lost. All right, let's go, let's go. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, F, I lost. Five hours later. It's oh f ah oh, bleep you bleep you I'm gonna get you next time. Six hours six hours after the five hours. Oh I got you that time. Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, overrated. <laughs> Done right. But the hammer has been yeah I I laid the hammer on that Call of Duty, overrated. I cannot sit and watch or play uh, some first-person shooter online or whatever, online or land party or whatever people do for longer than a half hour, especially if it's a nice summer day. Goodbye, guys. I, I got something better to do with my time. Like, ser- seriously, like anything. I, I'd rather count grass blades out, as long as I'm outside versus indoors. Uh, maybe I could go swimming. Obviously, is what I'd highly rather do than that. Um, but even a, a rainy day, I'd rather do something else. I'd rather play a different game. Like, hey, guys, yeah, I'm, uh, guys, oh, shoot, I forgot my, oh, my mom really needs me to pick up something for her, and then just go home and play Secret of Evermore or something. That's how I feel about Call of Duty and games like that. Fighting games similarly, where you just do the same thing over and over. Oh, it's just maybe it ended a little differently each time. la di da it's, oh, my God, no, I... I don't want to say anything I'll regret. <laughs> Jay Bushy, welcome back. Love to hear from you. Jay Bushy and Brian Herrera, love hearing from you guys. Jay Bushy says, what do you, th- what do the wild do about all these stupid penalties they've been taking? Sit players, your thoughts? Absolutely, sit players, yeah. Sit players. And even um, um, Dean Everson said that. Yeah, if, if they're going to keep doing that, they won't play. Yeah, rather than like say like a rotation or something. Think like if Hartman keeps taking penalties, sit him, sit him, and and put uh, sit him and put Shaw in, or call up Sammy Walker. Doggone it, that's what I really want to happen. I think everybody does. I think everybody wants to see that happen. Um, and I remember Derek a while back was just like, yeah, like meh about Ryan Hartman coming back. Like woohoo, we're so excited. I I agree with that statement big time. Yes, yeah, sit players absolutely. Jay, Brian Herrera, welcome back. Says uh, rather. Oh, it looks like he's, res- is he responding to something? Okay, yep, yep, just, just in my post, yep. Uh, rather see DeWare get a shot, get a shot up instead of Hartman. Interesting thought there. Hart is too much of a liability this year with his lack of discipline, and he's not good either, is he? Rossi was starstruck or something where he would have, ha- where he would have to ease back in the lineup and not thrown right into the top line. Who would you see up top? That's a really good question. <laughs> That's a really good question because it, it's so hard. If you have to go... See, that's the thing. This whole stupid uh, grief line thing, as as valuable as it's been, it's not been that great this year. Felino's not been good. Greenway sucks. I, I said it. Greenway sucks. I said it. Um, I'm not that worried about breaking it up at this point. So possibly Jule Erickson Eck. Jule Erickson Eck is probably the, the safest, easiest route. Um, and I, yes, and putting Rossi up there is dangerous, but I, I think putting Rossi with Boldy is okay. I think putting Rossi with Boldy on the two line is okay. And then Steele could be third line, possibly third or fourth line. Giving Doer a chance if you want to leave Eck where he is, is a possibility. Obviously Eck plays in uh, so many other, uh, he plays on the power play and in the penalty kill. So that's the thing. That's what makes up for maybe like he's only on the third line. Him being uh, Drew Larkson Eck. But I do think that's been con- him being stuck just on the uh, third line all this time has been. Uh, I-, I think that's part of the reason for the five on five woes is the fact that your best center is on the third line all the time. So he's not out there as much as others on five on five. Uh, obviously, that helps the special teams, though. Penalty kills not been good. So, But the power play has been. 
with guys like uh, Jule Erickson Eck and um, Kalen Addison out there. Awesome question, Brian. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. I wouldn't mind seeing DeWare at least get a shot and see what happens. Shaw, I don't think... No. No. Shaw is, is, is bottom six, unfortunately. Maybe like a, a couple couple uh, opportunities here and there could play on the you know in the middle six to top top six for Shaw. Doer maybe I mean obviously nothing's been happening from him either. But that whole line's kind of been invisible, like DeHaim and all of them. Um, Ju Ju Lerichenek is the best center on the team if you want to go with the best. And I know it didn't always work all so great, but Hartman and Steele haven't been working either. They haven't been working at all. So. It's probably Drew Erickson Eck. Probably uh, at the end of the day. So <laughs> that that's pretty much where I'd have to go. If you want to go with the top, go with the top. And then, you know, a, a Greenway or a Hartman is traded away. Sammy Walker replaces them. Maybe you trade away both of them. Walker and Shaw are in the lineup, possibly. And you go from there. So but there's plenty of other guys in time that are going to, uh, you know, you have, that could be, you know, brought into the lineup at times, like a Nick Baton, God forbid. As good as he is in the AHL, he's a non-factor in the NHL, but maybe. <laughs> so that's how I see that. Awesome questions. Awesome questions. Derek, Jay, Brian, really, 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 really nice. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a very fun and excellent uh, <laughs> fan interaction. And sometimes, see, I... I intentionally don't come prepared sometimes for the questions. Like, say, if it's like, uh, what's your favorite oh, game? See, that way I can kind of be in a thought process and not just be like, boom, like that, like ESPN. Like, what's the most overrated game? Call of Duty. See, sometimes it's better to kind of go back and forth as I'm thinking. Cause it, it feels more fresh and more raw that way. So I intentionally don't do that, where where I come back 100% ready to just Call of Duty, you know. But maybe you guys would like that better. I don't know. But... um that's the way I'm approaching it now. If you prefer it a different way, let me know. I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm open-minded. I don't get offended. The only time I would get offended is if you just like went off on me or something, which thankfully nobody has. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for not doing that. Any of you out there that might not love the show. One person told me how the the, the retro game music is terrible. Get rid of it. You know, please put some real music on. It's like that's the identity of the show, though. And, you know, if you didn't notice, and I, I now do a podcast called Video Game Flashback, and I'm recording Secret of Evermore. The first, I'm the first retro video game podcast to do Secret of Evermore that I know about. There might be someone, but of all the ones that I know about, they haven't done it. So I'm very happy to be, you know, taking that venture right now, doing Secret of Evermore, one of the most underrated SNES games of all time. It was a late release for the SNES, relatively late, and it was made in America originally, which is, I think, one of the coolest parts of it, but it's not the main reason to like it. It's a wonderful game with kind of a Garfield sense of humor. <laughs> so, and I talk about it probably too much as I'm doing that show. It's obviously very much a work in progress. It's got a long way to go. So, it will, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it when you hear it. You'll see it when you see it, if you care about it. With that said, uh, shout-outs, of course, Scott Cavendish, Minnesota Wild Global, Patrick Turner, Minnesota Wild Nation, coming in out of Florida. Thank you guys so much. Florida is a huge part of this podcast, apparently, and I never knew. Uh, I really appreciate that. It's, it's freaking cool. <laughs> you know, it really is. Uh, of course, MNW Prospects. MNW Prospects, awesome, awesome, awesome. Doing a great job keeping up with the prospects. Pavel Bennett, uh, Justin Bakke of the Sound the Foghorn podcast. Brennan Quast. Um, I loved hearing him on a show in the past, too. It was... Uh, uh, Puck Gone Wild. Oh, I love that show. I love that show, but unfortunately they stopped doing it. Those guys were good, man. So, just so you know, that's underrated. That's the, one of the most underrated podcasts out there, in my opinion. Yeah, Florida is still number one overall in states listening to this show. So, Minnesota, it's funny. It's just funny, huh? <laughs> yep, I tend to reach outside of Minnesota, don't I? I, I? I've noticed that with most of my shows. In the cities, El Cajon, California. That sounds kind of interesting it does a, sometimes I wonder if this is a little bit crazy obviously Iowa yep I would hope there's some people from Iowa yeah but I really appreciate that yep Oslo that, out of Norway that's really cool but yeah Florida St. Petersburg Tampa Florida Whew. and then there's Minneapolis and St. Paul and Prague Prague not New Prague Prague 
Not New Prague. <laughs> Prague is in Min New Prague is in Minnesota, I believe, but Prague itself, very cool. So with that, I better stop babbling. And again, thank all of you so much. Again, really appreciate every one of you for interacting with the show. And uh, those of you that have written a positive rating, thank you. Anybody that could in the future, please do on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Google, well, Google Podcast, I don't think has that ability, but like Audible, Stitcher, Spotify. With that said, I better get going. I apologize. I've, this has been a very long show again. Always so much to say. And again, uh, go wild. Hopefully they come out of this slump and I hope, I hope a trade is on the horizon.